Hello Strength Matters, welcome to Whiteboard Wednesdays, an opportunity for us to offer as much as we can in terms of training concepts and training principles uh, to help you become the best version of yourselves. My name is Phil and I'm Scott. The key focus of today is to get the definitions straight, so what is the everyday athlete and why it applies to you and we'll also take just, just as a one-off, just give a brief introduction to ourselves. I'm Scott Olson of Beyond the Muscle. I'm actually fairly new to Strength Matters. Uh, Phil was the assistant instructor at a brilliant kettlebell certification in La Jolla. And I have a background in soft tissue therapy, Chinese medicine, uh, biomechanics, and fascia. So I've been supporting the industry mostly from the uh, injury side um, from Olympic athletes to the rehab side of orthopedic care and post-surgery and I, uh, I'm excited to be on board. I'm based in San Diego, I left for Royal Marines six years ago after a very active career. Since then I've spent humbling years in the fitness industry, I've done course after course after course. I started out as a sports and remedial massage therapist which was for two years in London and then turned more to training. Well, let's, let's start off and define what the everyday athlete is. Uh, and so uh, what we have here on the board is a level of athletic activity. And before we go on, the concept of athlete can uh, put some people off. Not all of us are competing in sports or training for a specific event. But the truth is, if you're showing up here, uh, you are putting your time in. Showing up to classes, you're, you're educating yourself on movement and health. And there's a lot that is, um, a lot that is important to share, uh, specifically to people who are willing and, and able to train themselves more dynamically. Uh, so, Phil, take on the, the concept of not just the everyday athlete, but where, where we're at. I drew this from several government websites in the, the UK and the US. And they're all pretty similar, but generally speaking, if you take all adults between the age of 16 and 64, approximately 80% are completely sedentary. So, that means that they wake up, sit down at the breakfast table, get up, move into their car, sit down in the car, get out of their car, sit down in the office, stay in the office for eight to 12 hours, sit back in the car, go home, sit at the dinner table, go up and sit on the couch. You spend 14 to 16 hours a day sitting and with the promise to themselves that at some point in their lives they'll get around to changing it and um, it's pretty much that's when they come and find us when they're in their 40s or 50s and they're having a bit of a freak out because they um, can't touch their toes anymore, far from it. Now, you may have heard that sitting is the new smoking, and the truth is, having a sedentary life uh, is a risk factor for heart disease, diabetes. Uh, it actually can reduce the lifespan for people who are too sedentary. A further 20% of the population. They do a little bit, they might go out and go for a walk, they might have joined the gym, typical kind of part with their cash at the beginning of January and have gone to the gym two or three times throughout the whole month. And they go every now and again. And that's uh, that's 20%. Only 20% of all adults between 16 and 64 exercise enough. So what is enough? That um, it varies who you ask on which government website, but enough generally means a few 30 minute walks per week and one to two gym sessions per week to work on strength or resistance training. The people that we're speaking to, if you're watching this video, it's highly likely that you're already in, in there. Where does that fit on this scale? What we've got here is a scale zero as the couch commando, the person who never exercises, has barely exercised, or may be injured. The elite athlete is top level of human performance. Um, so, if this is you, these people here, they're exercising a couple of times a week, maintaining a little bit of health. Where do you think that fits on this scale? I would say it's three and above. 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's still a bit of a range, so maybe three to six. Yeah, 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 I was thinking exactly the same. So, uh, so in terms, if that's complete catch potato, three out of ten in terms of the best that humans can be, I'd put this 20% kind of maybe even a, between a two and a three, right? Um, as soon as they get beyond, say, a seven, maybe, I think, six or seven, yeah. around there, then, you know, you're, you're on, the, on the path of being elite. So you've already put years of training in, you have very specific goals. This is the everyday athlete. So, 60 plus 20. So this is your, the rest of the population. Everybody else sits down there. This is your pre-athletic. And that might also include people who are not cleared for exercise, uh, health reasons, post-surgery, etc. Uh, so perhaps someone has been uh, much higher developed on this scale, but actually takes several months off. Uh, so, you know, it's not always about motivation. Sometimes it's life circumstance. Uh, but essentially, we have this range for the everyday athlete, and what we're going to be talking about in future videos, this concept that when you train functionally, when you train athletically, and really apply these principles, uh, whether it's for yoga, Pilates, whether it's for ultimate frisbee or powerlifting or parkour, these concepts that we're going to go over, you can take the, the same drills and progress them and make them relevant to the elite athlete. You can take these same drills and regress them and make them relevant to people who are pre-athletic or perhaps in uh, injury or health concern. Uh, so yeah, this is this is the everyday athlete. So what we've done at Strength Matters is, in our opinion, broken down what we perceive to be the components that make up complete fitness, which is complete athleticism. Um, come up with a way that you can just simply test to see where you sit in terms of your own capabilities and how you might work on your weaknesses. Because uh, what's key, and this will, this will come out in the next episode, is um, the importance of working on your weakness. Generally, people work on their strengths, and they get stronger and stronger at those things, but then they reach a plateau because they just can't improve because they just haven't worked on these baseline weaknesses. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll be delving into that. We'll be looking at the ways in which the human body moves um, and advising you on how you can structure a training program so you can work in all of the ways that the body moves so you don't lose any of that ability. Yeah, so I think that's a good start for today. Uh, we have a lot more coming to you, so stay tuned and uh, there'll be a lot of fun conversations going forward. Thanks for watching. Yeah. Thanks for watching.